Good morning. Happy Wednesday. So we're going to be studying about more of the um, choices that we can make that determine which master we are following in our life. We know that everything, every choice is important. We are either serving God or self and the enemy of God. So today we're going to look into some fatal deceptions. And Jude, the brother of our Lord, is warning us in verses 3 and 4. So let's go there. Why must we contend for the faith? Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needed for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith, which was once delivered unto the saints. Why? For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of God, our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So Jude is very concerned because there are, there have always been, as it says here, ordained of old, just like in the past, God has warned his his people of these type of people all through the centuries. These are people that take the grace of God and use it to their own destruction and the destruction of others. They turn it into lasciviousness, separating us from Jesus. You see the present truth at this time and now as well, but especially at this time the, to accept the Messiah, Jesus Christ as Messiah, and to recognize him as the risen Lord who died for our sins was a, um, a, a point of doctrine that was very essential because the Jews were coming out of the sacrificial system pointing to the Messiah. And so here were people coming into the church, as we've learned all in our study of Acts, trying to deny the Lord Jesus Christ and minimize who he was, the Son of God, and bringing in sensuality and and feelings-based uh, ideas, what feels good, and, and this is my way. And so we see also in verse 8 and 11, he expands, these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. So they minimize the sins of the flesh and despise dominion. What does that mean? When they're corrected or when... A teacher in the church is is teaching otherwise they kind of minimize it and oh it's not important woe unto them for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error of ba Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Korah so three examples are mentioned by Jude the first one is Cain Cain on the externally he brought a sacrifice just like his brother. He just didn't bring it God's way. He brought his own ideas, his own sacrifice, what he wanted to bring. So on the exterior, it, all, it looked very similar, but the heart was defiled and there was no love in the sacrifice. It was a gr grudging sacrifice. So these, are, these examples are brought up for us to check ourselves. You know, where are we and are we serving God with gratitude and joy? Then we have Balaam, who was trying to play, you know, man of God and, and yet get the rewards and the bribes of this world. The, the, he was, his eye was on money. So when the king of Moab came and offered him money to curse Israel, all he could see was the gold and the silver. And so he was willing to dishonor God and curse Israel. God overruled. So this is, again, um, another attitude that is very dangerous. You know, where, where our treasure is, that's where our, where our heart, our treasure is, that's where our heart is. So if Jesus is our treasure, then we will honor him. The, the next one is Korah. Korah, and he was a cousin of Aaron, and Moses. So Levitical family, right? He had lots of responsibility in Israel, but he wasn't Moses or Aaron. He wasn't the top guy, and he aspired to be the top person, like sort of like Lucifer in heaven, right? 
And so he's like, you know, everybody's holy. The whole congregation is holy. So he's he was planting seeds of confusion in the congregation and, and trying to uplift himself and his ideas and sort of do things his way, right? And we're warned against these kind of ideas that are contrary to, to the straight way, truth, and life. And so... Um, you know, how can we apply this in our lives? Do we minimize watching movies that are full of immorality and crime and evil and, and deception? And do we play games that involve um, lying? I, I, one time I was watching, you know, some young people playing a game and you have to lie your way through the game to win. And I thought, you know, this is practicing evil. We have to have that discernment from above in all of our choices and not go by feelings, but stay connected with Jesus. So let us read the note. It's a longer one. Let's see if we can finish it in time. Rebellion originated with Satan and all rebellion against God is directly due to satanic influence. Those who set themselves against the government of God have entered into an alliance with the arch apostate and he will exercise his power and cunning to captivate the senses and mislead the understanding. He will cause everything to appear in a false light. Like our first parents, those who are under his bewitching spell see only the great benefits to be received by transgression. No stronger evidence can be given of Satan's delusive power than that many who are thus led by him deceive themselves with the belief that they are in the service of God. King Saul had manifested great zeal in suppressing idolatry and witchcraft, yet in his disobedience to the divine command, he had been actuated by the same spirit of opposition to God and had been as really inspired by Satan as are those who practice sorcery. And when reproved, he had added stubbornness to rebellion. He could have offered no greater insult to the spirit of God had he openly united with idolaters. It is a perilous step to slight the reproofs and warnings of God's word or of his spirit. Many, like Saul, yield to temptation until they become blind to the true character of sin. They flatter themselves that they have had some good object in view and have done no wrong in departing from the Lord's requirements. Thus they do despite to the spirit of grace until its voice is no longer heard and they are left to the delusions which they have chosen. Every man, woman, and child that is not under the control of the Spirit of God is under the influence of Satan's sorcery. And by his words and example, he will lead others away from the path of truth. This is a sad thing. We're not only hurting ourselves, but everyone in our circle of influence is affected as well. No man is an island. My brethren, God is grieved that your envying and jealousies, your bitterness and dissension, in all these things, you are yielding obedience to Satan and not to Christ. When men are proud, vain, frivolous, worldly-minded, avaricious, unkind, censorious, we need not be told with whom they are associating. Who is their intimate friend, most intimate friend? They may not believe in witchcraft, but notwithstanding this, they are holding communion with an evil spirit. Rebellion and apostasy are in the very air we breathe. We shall be affected by them unless we be, by faith, hang our helpless souls upon Christ. So it is my prayer that we will spend our time in communion with Jesus Christ because he has promised to direct us. There will be a voice behind us. This is the way. Walk ye in it. And may we not lose, um, not lose being tuned into that sweet voice of our Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless your day.